A big hello to everyone, this is Tatiana, and welcome to my channel. If you haven't done so yet, then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell in order not to miss out on any of these videos. It's been about a month since my client last came in, so today we're correcting her gel polish manicure. I can already see some broken corners, so we're changing to an oval shape and finishing with a whimsical geometric design. Getting straight to work, I'm filing down the color and leaving the base, doing everything just as usual. After using the nail drill, I'm buffing up the nail and proceeding to filing the nail down into its new form. Going from square to oval can be achieved without losing any length, but it is a good idea to tell your client in advance that if you're going to do an oval shape, you will have to take down quite a bit of the free edge. In our case, we had already decided to take down the length, but the corners we file down because for some clients this makes the durability of the coating better and helps avoid chipping and the coating just lasts longer. Today we're doing a combination manicure with the help of one drill bit and some small scissors. We're starting off by working with moist hands and cuticles. Doing this step here with the nail drill would be really difficult. With this nail bit, I'm removing both the dry skin from the nail and working deep into the cuticle. The cuticle is really dry now and is tacky to the nail, even though my client's hands are moist. When you're working with moist hands, it's really important to dehydrate them, and not only once. You really want to have the nails themselves nice and dry, otherwise you'll be dealing with lifting. I'm finally ready to apply our rubber base. For our nails today, I'm starting off with a thin coat of our base and then letting that dry. I'm super happy with the consistency of this base. It's not too liquid, so it doesn't run off to the sides. 
Uh, it doesn't cause me any problems and it works beautifully. The alignment turned out wonderful and hooray, there are no streaks. These camouflages work great, they're semi-transparent, and they look fantastic. I plan to do this in one layer, but I'm going to go ahead and just uh, add a bit more product. It levels out on its own, and it's rather dense, but yet it gives this uh, slightly transparent look. For today's design, we'll be using some beautiful colors. I thought the pink was going to be a bit softer, but it seems that it has some neon undertones. On the dried camouflage, I'm drawing some geometric designs in two colors. In order for it to look brighter and just add some more contrast, I've also decided to add some black and white details. On the middle finger, I've decided to do something a little bit different. I'm going to make that background white and then add just a black outline for our shapes. Of course, we're sticking to that geometric style and then I'll go in and add some color. After the outline dries, we're adding some elements in pink and gray. This combination of colors really impressed me and I think everyone is going to love it. Once that design is dry and ready, I'm going over everything in a top coat. And for this, I chose a mat. And here is our finished look. I'm so happy with the way this turned out. It looks amazing. And on the right hand, we decided to add a little bit of contrast and leave that in just a gray. I think this looks beautiful. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I really enjoyed doing this look and I can't wait to see you in my next video.